<laughs> I am Vormithrax, of course, here to play uh, a different game. I won't say new game because I have uh, played it once before on the channel, just very briefly, uh, long ago. <laughs> I forget exactly when. Seven, eight months, something like that. I forget the last time we looked at it. Um, but it's had quite a bit of development time. Uh, changes has, have occurred. And uh, like a few other games that we're looking at this week, I wanted to kind of retouch, relook at it, see how things have progressed and where they're at. I really enjoy the uh, the basic gameplay aspects of it, more so the combat portion than the uh, strategic layer, which you'll see here in just a bit. But uh, hopefully in the four hours we've got for it today, we can uh, dive in and make some progress and see how things are going. So again, Trials by Fire. Um, I'm not going to try to describe it. You'll, you'll get a good idea what it looks like here in just a second. Uh, we'll choose our adventure. I'm going to do the same one I've done before. They've added more characters. They've added more challenges, more quests, more of everything, basically. And they've uh, they've changed quite a bit. So <clears throat> I don't know how much of what I can vaguely remember of my previous play uh, will translate over. But um, we're going to stay with the Trial of Fire quest. Uh, Influently replayable custom quest. No, I don't want that. I want the lore quest. I want the, uh, yeah, I want that one. Retrieve a living world relic to help save your dying people. So we're going to do the storyline lore quest, water gem. Uh, I don't want alchemist. Let's see, party. I want the one, the basic one that I had done before. So warrior, oops. warrior, not warlord, warrior hunter elementalist. All right, that's the one I remember. So I'm going to try to compare against what I remember previously. It's good that these other ones are in here, but I know nothing about, uh, I think I had unlocked warlord. But uh, I don't remember playing with it much. And I've never seen either of these two. So apparently you two are locked and there's a final one still on the way. Um, discover three landmarks, complete three different adventures. All right, so we, we may get to those. We'll see. Uh, so we're going to go with Warrior, Hunter, and Elementalist. I'm just going to leave the items as the default, I believe. So we've got a bone sword, a bone longbow, and a shaman rod. Um, yeah, crossbow... Crude sling, headshot, no, or bone longbow, I mean. Yeah, we'll just leave it the way it is. So that's fine. Not worried about items. We got our party, and we're doing water gem on not hard. Let's do medium until I get my feet back under me again. Select modifiers for this quest. Nah, we're not going to do modifiers yet. <clears throat> so this is the basic starting position that I remember previously. Uh, with the first three characters, their basic gear, weapon, and armor. Uh, choose character portrait. Nah, I don't care about that. I'm fine with the names as well. <clears throat> what else? So we've got three, hmm, three sub-quests, I guess we'll call them. So we've, we've got, uh, I forget if, what, what, what they call this person, but uh, we've got to encounter that person, that person, and then finally fight the dragon. And uh, I have done it before in, in my previous playthrough. Um, but like I said, things have changed and I, I remember very little. So let's begin our journey. The settlement Terralin is dying. You must travel to an elven palace to locate the legendary Waterstone and save your people from the drought. New objective, find the water gem, locate the rumored Dublin temple, and retrieve the water gem for Terralin. I'm not going to read all of this flavor text, by the way. Uh, like that. <laughs> Uh, I'll leave it up for a second if anybody wants to pause and then uh, read through it. That's fine. Basically, it says we need to go find the water gem. Elven artifact of great power, of course. Of course! We must have a MacGuffin. Chase the MacGuffin. All right. Uh, so we're going to continue. And here is the strategic overworld layer. That sounds a bit loud. Let's dial that down a bit. Okay, so the strategic lair. So we've got different sites we can visit. This is our party. Uh, we consume food as we travel. This is healing herbs, I believe. Yeah, mystic herbs for healing injuries and then cash to buy things. Uh, we are currently determined. Keep the party's morale high by making progress towards your next objective. A high morale will grant bonus armor and redraws in combat, as well as an increased chance of finding epic gear. So determined armor, redraws, and epic loot. And then a fresh civilization resting here will restore a large amount of stamina and some health for each hero. Plus 35% stamina, plus 2 health. So where you rest is important. If you just rest out in, the, in a field somewhere, you get less of a benefit than if you do it like on a, on a village or a, a structure that can provide 
shelter in that. Uh, the arrow is pointing the general direction they want us to go. Locate the rumored Elven Temple. So we don't know exactly... I don't remember this little map here. However, uh, so that's giving us a general idea of what direction to go. So it's up to us if we want to backtrack or sidetrack. Uh, finishing side quests uh, has the benefit of giving you extra gear and experience and all that, but the negative is that you're essentially on a timer. So you, you, you do need to keep generally moving towards this, otherwise you, you get further and further off of this um, party morale towards your, your objective thing, and you get negative effects, and it pushes you that direction, basically. Uh, so that's the sieve rating, journal towards our quest, the, the three landmarks or benchmarks. Day one. All right, let's, uh, let's hop over into this place. So a settlement, does it actually tell me? A ruins, travel cost, explore cost. Oh, so it has little hints now of what you're going to expect there. High chance of a battle, medium chance of equipment and food, low chance of materials. Yeah, they didn't have this last time I played. Most of these are going to be combat or explore sites. Depending on what you need and what you're looking for. At least now you can, uh, you can get a vague idea. Alright, let's just pop over to this little settlement next door. And uh, actually, no, let's not go to the settlement. Let's go up here. Let's go to the ruins. Maybe we can get into a quick fight. All right, you surprise a group of looters amongst the devastated buildings. To your surprise, they begin to flee, leaving a large, hollowed-out carapace filled with water. Stop the looters, demand they hand over any spoils, which will start a battle, or let them go and secure the water. Let's uh, let's go ahead and stop the looters. Let's get into a fight. So here's the part I do enjoy. I really like this this combat system they've got. All right, defensive update, huh? Uh, you will now get two defense for every unspent recycled card at the end of your turn instead of one. Wait a minute, let me think that through. Unspent recycled card. Concert with this, all the defend cards in the hero's basic decks have been replaced with cards appropriate to each hero. We don't have defend cards anymore? Unspent recycled card. Know, however, that weakness cards no longer provide any defense when recycled, so try to spend these during your turn. I guess we'll figure that out as we go. There's been a lot of changes to cards and values and so on, but I I don't remember a lot of the, the details on how much one thing cost or its specific abilities, so we're going to be relearning all of these. Um, but basically what's going on here is we got our three heroes on the left. You always start on the left. It's always a, an arena of approximately this size. Randomly generated and spaced out barriers that can block line of sight and in... in uh, keep movement from occurring and so on. So it scrambles up the scenery, basically. There are environmental effects that can occur through the different cards and uh, enemy effects. He has a deck of cards also. I don't know what they are yet, apparently. <laughs> um, we have cards available for each of our heroes. So those three cards are for that hero, the green are for that hero, and the uh, lighter purple are for our elementalist. Um, and then we have a mana pool. So drop a skill card here or right click on it to recycle. Recycled skill cards can be used this turn only as willpower to pay for other skill cards or to perform a move to action. We'll, we'll, we'll get used to that. Um, so I get to pick and do whatever I want in whatever order I want. Let's see. So we're just facing a single human bounty hunter. Strength 10. So if we can kill him at range, that would be optimal, of course. Uh, I think... My hunter, so when you point at a, a, a token where your unit is, you'll see a little eyeball indicator appear there. That means I do have line of sight on that target from here. Your first attack on a single target each turn deals plus two damage. Well, cool. How about we just do a power shot right off the bat? Let's uh, get rid of swipe. So I'm recycling that card, which gives me the power. So I have uh, one power now. I need two power to actually activate power shot. I can sacrifice other people's cards to also generate power. Uh, I don't plan on advancing, so I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice that one as well. We now have the power we need. And that's why there's a glowing border around it. Um, why is that one? I guess... Why is it? Why are these glowing, but not that one? I don't know. I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and attack. So we're going to do a ranged attack. <clears throat> I believe it's going to do 7 damage, or is that already including the 2? That's probably already including the 2. It's showing me the actual damage. Alright, easy peasy. <clears throat> Let's see, Force Missile, Unstable Blast, 
Don't have the range. Don't have the range. And wild swing, wild swing, and swipe. Yeah, we're going to let him come towards us and, um, you know, do other stuff. So let's... Uh, We'll advance to here. I'm going to keep the force missile, get rid of the unstable blast. Um, oops, I hope that gets him back. All right. Hero cannot end their turn with more than one card in their hand unless none of their cards is recycled. What, what's that again? <laughs> oh, okay. I can only have one card in hand. All right. Uh, keep the swipe. I won't need that. Well, he's playing an advanced card. <laughs> he moves forward and then back. That's kind of funny. Can we finish him <clears throat> with uh, my ranged guy? Or ranged attack three. All right, that'll do. I got two of those, so we'll just get rid of that. Get rid of that. So get rid of that. And strike. Strike. Oh, he didn't die? I guess I wasn't paying attention to the numbers there. I thought he would be dead after that. All right, let's do... Uh, let's only move two. We'll, uh, we'll advance. We'll discard. Move again. And then we'll hit him. Victory! <laughs> Probably the easiest fight we'll, we'll ever see. Alright, continue. What do we get? <clears throat> we already got levels up, did we? Click a hero to level up. One remaining. And we got a robe and some cash. Oh, let's go for... Go for the hunter first. All right, this is where we basically get to tune the deck. So I've got an opportunity to uh, add a card to the deck. You can only have nine cards, so if I add one, I have to remove another one. Bone Wolf. I love Bone Wolf. It's probably changed a lot. Can perform combo strikes in response to ranged attacks, and all combo strikes deal plus one damage. So three cost does two damage. I love having a Bone Wolf. Let's swap out... I don't want to level that. No. Back. Bone Wolf. I gotta put it in place. So. Bone Wolf. Hey now. Confirm. Take all. Continue. Alright. There you go. That's that's the basics. Oh no. So I don't want to go to the settlement yet. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time backtracking. But let's go ahead and hit this one as well. Man, ton of stuff nearby. Come across the remains of an old castle atop a large hill. You're able to find a small cache of dried food in the main keep that will certainly help on the journey ahead. All right. A very small cache. After exploring for a short while, Raston spots what appears to be an elementalist tower as part of the main keep. Adjacent to the lookout tower that is slightly higher than the first tower. So, attempt to jump from the lookout tower. 50% health damage and an injury. <laughs> so, it's 50-50 chance. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Uh, she falls on your side. <laughs> Lovely. Alright, so we got a broken arm. That's about my luck. You ransack the wizard's chambers, uncover some leather bracers, and the black grimoire. So, take them all, of course. Continue. I have no medicinal herbs to help with our broken arm. We could head back to a settlement and see if we might be able to buy some. Let's do that. All right, monotonous clank of blacksmith's hammer striking an anvil ahead. You approach the shop where a human apprentice greets you warmly. Uh, his employer, Silent Sal, easily the tallest human woman you've seen, is especially interested in rare gemstones you uh, have... Should you have any, you may want to sell. All right. Uh, I only got uh, robe bracers. Let's um, get rid of the robe. Quick step, armor one. Move two, draw a card, no cost. Uh, we'll hold on to that. The Black Grimoire, what do we got? Curse, 
Magic Attack 3 and inflict defenseless on all targets in an indicated area. So it's a beam attack. Or the Necrotic Spear, or and the Necrotic Spear. Magic Attack 2, if this effect defeats the target, draw two cards. Hmm. Hmm. I do kind of like it. We'll keep a hold of it. Uh, there are no, uh, no goodies for us to heal ourselves with, unfortunately. So there are materials you can gather, loot, find, buy, that allow you to uh, do different kind of crafting projects, build items and such. We're not going to get into that quite yet. Flash powder, I don't have the money for. I don't need any of this. We'll just continue. All right, how do I go in to look at my party? Uh, character sheet. All right. Hmm. Well, why is my elementalist the one that tried to make that jump? <laughs> Did I have a choice and not notice? Why was she doing the jumping? Why wasn't the uh, you know the warrior or the the hunter doing the physical stuff? Hmm. All right. So do we want to equip the black grimoire? Basically, this will add those two cards to my deck. So it'll put additional cards in the deck, which dilutes the remaining cards. Of course, for is anybody that's a Card playing character or person knows. Let's go ahead and do it. We'll add those in and then this one. Sure. So your cards are your base deck, your nine cards you choose from when you're leveling up, and whatever gear you're carrying. So the bow, for example, is giving me the headshot, that's giving me the prepare, and then that's giving me the quick step. So we should have 12 cards total. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, uh, we're done on that screen. Let's make some progress towards our our objective. What do we got? Battle equipment, food, materials. It's roughly in the direction. Picking your way through the ruins, I find a lock cellar with some contents salvageable. Well, that's pretty handy. Leather helm. Metal axe, some more food, and some more money. So, the warrior. Charge, move three to target, melee attack two, plus one for each space moved. So, you can get up to three extra damage. So, it could be a melee attack five. Mighty blow, melee attack eight, and then push two spaces. But it costs three, which is pretty expensive. Hmm... Versus a double strike. Cost two. Let's uh let's swap that out. Go for the big blow. Alright, keep on moving. Trying to get into a fight. <laughs> Small group of charred are picking over the loot of a band of recently dead hybrid. Upon seeing you, the charred split into two groups and begin to flee. A solitary charred runner flees with the best looking item. Um, let's just try to chase down the runner. After a frantic chase, Malkin manages to tackle the charred runner and takes and <laughs> Malkin manages to tackle the charred runner and takes. She quickly gives up her haul before fleeing again. <laughs> Whatever. So purple, purple black ground or background, jeweled dagger. So. Chose the bottom left, the two characters that can use it. So my elementalist and my hunter, my warrior, wouldn't be able to use it. A setup ability, no cost. Melee attack one, inflict exposed. Stab, cost one. Melee attack two, draw a melee attack card from your deck. And then surging strike, cost two. Melee attack three, add two damage per card already played this round. I like it. And on the right, it shows the various um, modifiers that you might need to know about. So exposed means character takes one additional damage from all damage sources. Cannot have stealth. Cool. We'll definitely take it. Uh, probably give it to the sorceress. Can we equip that? Oh, we can equip that with the bow. Well, that might change my mind. So it's going to be a flat addition... Yeah, let's let's give it to him. That's a lot of cards in the deck, though. <laughs> Fatigue. 
Tired. Uh, so flashing at me here. So we'll get uh, pretty good stamina and health back. This is dangerous if we let it get too low. Uh, we don't have a settlement in range. Yeah, let's go ahead and stop here for the night. So we can just rest. We can upgrade item. We can hone item. Don't have an herb to meditate. I don't have... Oh, it's two herbs for heal injury. All right. And then we're going to lose one food and gain two health each. So she'll go back up to full strength. Let's just upgrade. I'm not going to do these others. And you can spend multiple days, but we're not going to do that. All right, we're back up to fairly fresh. Let's keep wandering our way. Oh, I missed the opportunity to become famous again. Damn it, I keep missing that. <laughs> Into the ruins we go. Uh, so in the ruins of what appears to be a human town, you come across a group of humans who have captured a single rattling. Upon noticing the party, the captive calls out desperately, Help the traitor confront the bandits. So the humans are the bandits, and the rattling is a traitor. So it's a battle and possible side quest. Leave the traitor to his fate and explore the ruins and get food. They also didn't used to last time I played. Or at least one of the times I played previously, uh, we didn't get this kind of info. I think there's an option to turn this off, by the way, getting this, this side info. That kind of guides you on what the choice is going to do. Let's confront the bandits. I am in a bandit confronting mood. All right, so two bandits, neither one of which have any ranged fire. They're going to try to close the distance as quickly as possible. <laughs> a lot of the elementalist cards are position dependent, like flame fan at the bottom of the card. It shows in gray where the elementalist stands and then the pattern of spaces. So it's uh, those four spaces that uh, is where the flames are going to go. Sometimes it's a single bar, like a, a beam attack. Other times it's spread out like that. Like there's the bar attack, the curse. Hmm. So if they close, we've got two spaces here. Only one enemy will be able to get into that position. I could put the warrior here. I could leave her here. She'd still be able to fire to hit that initial target. Or I could swap these two while they close. I could move him over, move her down. That way the warrior's going to take the brunt. I'm trying to remember the rules for line of sight along hex edges. I think somebody here can hit somebody here, but I, I'm not 100%. So, I have no ranged attacks ready to go. I don't know how fast these guys are. They might be able to close the distance in one round. Let's um, let's do this. Go ahead and move you to there. Move three to target melee attacks. See, I would love to do that, but they're not going to be close enough. I think I'm going to leave everybody right like this. We'll let them advance. I'll see how far they make it, and then we'll hammer them. I just don't have any range damage I can really take advantage of. You can now hold right mouse button to get a line of sight preview on any hex. Cool. Uh, wait, right mouse button. But that's telling me... Let's see. For which character is the line of sight occurring? Oh, okay, I see. So it's highlighting which ones can see which ones. So everybody can see that space. If I click here... These two should not have the eyeball symbol. None of them have the eyeballs, so I can't see that. Only the warrior can see to there. Wait, or, I mean the, the hunter can see to there, so the warrior is blocked. So I want to know about this space. Can this person see this space? Yes. All right, so we can fire along the spine of hexes. Cool. Cool. Let's do, uh, yeah, I just don't remember from the last time I looked how far things can move. But I don't have, uh, <laughs> I don't have enough knowledge to know for sure, but I'm going to hold this position, I think. Um, I don't have much I can do to really power myself up. And to after performing a melee attack, um, yeah, everything's attacks. 
let's get rid of the uh, the melee. I'm gonna keep the curse. Get rid of. Eh, we might get flame fan off. Alright, so we got some defensive points. I'm not used to the not having defend cards anymore. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ranged attack! I didn't think they would have ranged attack. Good for me. We had uh, that defense value. Well, that changes things. If they, can got, if they have ranged fire, then we've got to change up the strategy. Necrotic Spear has arrived. And there's no uh, no target listing on it. So anything in sight, I'm assuming? Yeah. I don't have line of sight. I assume that's why they're glowing, because I could hit them if I had line of sight. Or is it line of sight not even needed? Wow, really? No line of sight even needed? Hmm. Well, ideally, we want to uh, do a finishing blow with Necrotic Spear. Force Missile. I know that one. That's within three spaces. Uh, it's not going to jump. Do have Advance available? We could... Let's hold off on her. What else we got? Stab, power shot, set up. Melee attack three and inflict exposed. So they've got uh, we've got two spaces of movement. We could charge into this person. Move three to target, melee attack two plus one for each space move. So it'd be a four point attack. Adrenaline is a power up. It'll stay in effect for a while. All right, let's go with... Hmm. Not going to do Wild Swing. Not going to use Adrenaline, so let's do the Charge. Them down to six. We can. Hmm. I'm too far away. Yeah, I need to get there to fire. Can you fire through your own units? It says it's not blocking line of sight. I'm going to assume I'm going to be able to. Let's get rid of that. And that. Move to there. <clears throat> Get a power shot in. Then we can Necrotic Spear to finish him. And that will also draw the two cards. <laughs> of course I draw Broken Arm. <laughs> uh, become weakened until the end of your next turn. Play this card to remove it from the battle. <laughs> Alright, I will. Uh, we're not going to use Advance. Oops. Not going to advance, and I'm not likely going to flame fan, so we'll play that to get rid of it. And I don't have enough points. I don't have no range. Uh, we're not going to do unstable blast either. We'll keep force missile. All right, we have no defense on us this time, so if he does any attacks, we're actually going to take damage. Bunch of advances. And an offensive stance. No attack? Oh, oh that's too bad. <laughs> so he's got offensive stance. All attacks deal plus one damage. He's probably not going to get a chance to use that. We'll probably kill him. We need to do 12 damage total. He's got uh, two armor and then 10 health. 
So, prepare force missile, advance, and force missile, huh? Where's the big damage? Swipe, wild swing, swipe. Three to six, two, two, and I'm not going to use the advance. I'm not going to bring out a bone wolf. Headshot for five. If he has three health or less, destroy it. All right, so that could be our big finisher. That'll do seven if we can get him out of three health to begin with. Um, that's not going to be useful this round either. So let's start off with a wild swing. See if we can get him down some. So it's down to nine. I need to get him down to what again? Five or three? Three or less. Uh, let's assume you're pretty much out of it for this fight. Oh, get rid of all that. Do a surging strike as a melee attack. Um, I'd have to give up the headshot. I can only get him down to five. I can't get him down to three. Hmm. What if we change things up? Three available. If I give up two more, I can cast both. I'll oh, now this won't work because I'm not adjacent. I need to be able to move one also. Um which I can't do since I need both of these. I only need them to get to eight. What do you mean eight? Oh, that's right. I do five. Then if he has, you're correct. I was thinking about it. I was doing the math the wrong direction. <laughs> you are correct. We're fine. We're fine. So we're going to do five damage. He'll be at two. And then this will finish him off. <laughs> uh, streamers and math. Don't, don't ever mix the two. It's always a bad idea. <laughs> All right, another level up available. Let's do... I'm going to do the warrior next. What are you giving me? Parry, resilience, intimidate, or savage blow. I also have an option to upgrade, so that's why it shows two copies of the card here. So I can go from wild swing to wild swing plus. Well, instead of three to six, we'll do five to eight. So we retain the card type. It just upgrades it to a more powerful variant. Um... If you're attacked with this card in hand, prevent all damage from that attack. Defend to and discard. That's a pretty cool card. Resilience. Cost one power. Defend three at the beginning of your turn. Intimidate. Inflict weakened two on all enemies within spaces. And Savage Blow. Melee attack six. Enemies cannot perform combo strikes in the next turn. That's also pretty good. Just, just even for the base damage. Three to one. Six damage for two, uh, two cost. Let's either replace a swipe with a savage blow. Well, we're going to replace a swipe with whatever we pick. I think it's either a uh, parry or intimidate or savage blow. Um, let's go with savage blow. All right, what else do we get? A heavy breastplate. Defense five. Uh, or uh, armor. Armor three. Defend two after performing a melee attack. Hmm. Now, yeah, we've got to take it all. Then we'll take a look here. Uh, so after the last band is defeated, the Rattling Trader thanks Rastin for his help. He offers a substantial reward, but only if the party can escort him back to a nearby town. Yeah, I hope the town is south. <laughs> Too bad it's not telling me. Hey, it is south. Look at that. Exactly the direction we want to go. All right, uh, let's go talk to the warrior here. So, rage... Draw two cards. Draw one fewer card at the end of your turn. Yeah, I think we uh, we want that. The bone sword I pulled off in favor of the uh, the metal axe, and then the heavy breastplate. 
we can't wear the heavy breastplate, or we can't wear it. There we go. All right, so it's armor three always, and then it also provides us the card defensive stance. Cool, we're all still full strength. Let's uh, let's keep moving. Hmm, grasslands, materials, battle equipment. Sure, let's let's sidetrack for a second. And <laughs> tired. Keep going. Uh, you spot a strange-looking geyser periodically shooting a jet of green liquid into the air. The liquid falls down a deep hole before landing with a violent hiss at the bottom of this strange well. Use a container to try to keep some of the dangerous liquid. Avoid this strange phenomenon and continue on your way. Uh, I have no idea what this might do or what the benefit would be. Two-thirds chance to take health damage. I believe this means you get the reward. And there's a chance you take damage. Yeah, sure. Raston. Got some of the acidic liquid next time it shoots from the geyser. Unfortunately. <laughs> or health damage. Alright. So we got an acidic potion. Range attack one and inflict acid on the target. Whenever acid is inflicted, deal one status damage per stack of acid on the target. All right, so it's a damage over time effect, ranged attack. Hmm. I'm diluting out these decks, something fierce. Um, we don't want to stop here. Yeah, that's terrible. Let's see if we can get to anywhere. There we go. All right, partly ruined human town taken over by ratlings. You see three ratlings during a game of hoops in a narrow alleyway. So ask to join the game. Uh, or continue on. Sure. Jara throws a rope circle around one of the ratlings' pegs. The ratlings applaud you warmly and ask you to fetch your 20 obsidian winnings along with your original stake. On the next round, they want to increase the stakes. No, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough, thanks. All right, so we'll sell that, sell that. What do we got? Curved dagger, set up and stab. Rusted plate. The force rod. <clears throat> I do like things like the force rod to get the enemies off of my mage. Things are getting a lot more hectic as we, we keep advancing. The fights will get a lot harder. Um, so I like the idea of that. Studded leather. Offensive stance and quick step. Finding card synergies and ability synergies is one of the big parts of the game, just like Slay the Spire and other deck building games of the type. <clears throat> Bone hammer to the head. Uh, we could buy some food. I've got, what, 187? Let's, uh, let's buy the food. I don't, I'm not tempted enough to buy anything else. I want to keep the rest of my money. All right, we're gonna we're gonna rest here. Much better. Let's um, don't have crafting materials. Don't have crafting materials. Well, we have a tiny bit, but I'm not gonna worry about that yet. Yep, just rest. All right, we're back up to eight out of ten. Good enough. And let's go ahead and break camp. Side journey over to uh, a ruins. Yeah, let's go on a side journey. All right, so we got a fight. Yay! Out of the corner of her eye, she spots movement. She looks around and is shocked to see one of shadows moving across the wall without any warning. One of them detaches from the wall and approaches. Its body made up of strange, inky substance. What do we got? What do we got? Shadow something or others. Literally shadows. No idea what these guys do. Unknown cards. Unknown cards. All right. Let's uh, shoot them till they're dead. We've got <laughs> a block directly in the way of my, my my mage. Hmm, could be good, could be bad. We got the spear again, so we can drop two damage on somebody. Why are we getting the free swipe attack? Why are all my free cards free? Uh. Uh. I don't 
want to do a redraw. I got to remember the redraw thing. I'm not used to using those either. Why are all the cards... It's, it's the passive on my elementalist. I need to I need to look at that in more detail. <laughs> I don't think I can check things like that from inside. Cool. All right. Well, it would be more useful if they were actually in range to use these abilities. Let's uh, let's get rid of those two. I'm gonna use one of them to relocate. Actually, give me those back. Headshot. Prepare. You know, willpower. Yeah, let's uh, let's prepare. Well, that'll just flat kill one. No, it'll do five. He'll have five at that point. It won't kill him. Um, need to hit him with something else. Wipe. I can Necrotic Spear first, pass up on drawing the cards, but that would let me flat kill one, which I think is the better deal. Let's Necrotic Spear, get rid of the swipe, get rid of the stab, do a headshot. <laughs> Not worried about defense. I think I'm just going to skip those and put adrenaline on him. I would like to keep the savage blow, but... What you got, Shadow? Well, it's got some movement. I can hover her. Uh, like that one? Ah, there it is. First card you play each turn costs minus one willpower. Okay, that's why I didn't notice it before. I must have had multiple cost cards. That time I had all zero or one cost cards, so it zeroed them out and brought my attention to it. <laughs> all right, so first card you play minus one willpower versus your first attack on a single target each turn. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> and taunt once per turn after you play a card and or adjacent to an enemy. Defend two on all other heroes. Alright. Hmm. Okay, what are we looking at? So, melee attack four, improvised attack, so that's an easy one. Plus, we've got charge and wild swing and mighty blow. Melee attack eight and push two. I don't want to do that first. You're just going to contribute to everybody else's victory. Let's do the improvised attack, and then we'll follow it up with the mighty blow. So, yeah, we got plenty of points. Charge. Oh, I forgot about the uh, the combo strikes too. <laughs> and we'll just wild swing. <clears throat> so many things to remember. All right, with the shadows defeated, you're free to explore the plaza looking for anything useful. Lots of useful. Most of these look like crafting components. So, healthy wood, mithril dust, coins, and a hybrid horn. Coordinate. Target other friendly hero draws one card. So it's a zero cost action, and one of your other guys gets to draw a card. I like it. We'll take it all. Um... So many cards in the deck. Whoops. All right, your turn. What did we get? Intensify. Increase the duration of all named effects on all characters by two. That one's going to take some coordination between cards. Draining strike. Melee attack one. Gain two willpower. So you gain power for other cards. For a no cost one strike. I actually like that one. Ice Fire Aura, another power. Whenever an adjacent enemy gains burning, they also gain chilled. Slow Burn. Whenever you inflict any named effects on an enemy, inflict one extra stack. Uh, I like, but most of these are going to take setups. 
I don't know how likely it is that I'm going to gain those kinds of cards or get that kind of a combo set up. Let's keep it simple for now. Go with Draining Strike in place of a swipe. Okay, we got good shelter here. Should we want to take advantage of it? I think I will, actually. What is that? What 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 are you? <laughs> Hovering's not doing anything. Hmm. Let's we'll see if they're still there after we rest. Armed band have no intention of talking. Alright. Ouch! Three rangers. Or archers. Rattling bowmen. And we got the broken arm to start. Isn't that a joy? <laughs> play this card to remove it from battle. I need one part, one point to play it, huh? Uh, so this is not blocking movement, it looks like. Or line of sight, that is. That does, but the rest doesn't. All right, so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to play that to make it go away. We'll hold on to force missile. Eh, we may not. Oh, get rid of that too. I have no range fire. Wrap. Range fire three, and that's it. I got no advanced movement. <laughs> this is not good. This is not good. And there's no terrain to hide behind either. This is going to be painful. Can't take back the one I did. I want to do a, a redraw. First recycle. What? Click to redraw hand. Three redraws remaining. We have no cards in the recycle shrine to redraw. To redraw first recycle. Alright, I'm confused. I thought I could redraw my starting hand, but apparently I'm not doing it right. Oh, I see. Recycle and then... I, I understand. Alright, so... Get rid of those. Then click here. Alright, so... Set up. Melee attack 3. Inflict expose. Coordinate. And... Acid of... Well, at least we got charge. It's not going to be far enough. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm still going to be short. We're going to send him in to get pin cushions. Let's go to bed. Oh, need one more point. At least we got rid of one of them. Incoming. you got offensive stance and a little bit of armor 
Swipe, Savage Blow, we got Advance again, move two, that'll get me in range, and then we can melee attack six to kill him. So we need two points for that, get rid of that one. Cantrip, I think. Get rid of the curse. Play the... Oops. Yeah, play that. Um, We've got the headshot also. That will kill it. Wait, we'll do three. Yep, that'll kill it. Alright. Do I have enough for all of this? I need to advance. I need the savage blow. Get rid of force missile, get rid of quick step, and Alright, not too bad. I think my armor took all of the damage. Yep, armor took all the damage, so we've got no hit point loss. Uh what hero? What hero do we want? Um I'll go with the ranged guy again. Hit and run, glass lizard, cover shot, and take aim. Cover shot I like as well. We haven't gotten a bone wolf out yet, though. <laughs> I don't remember glass lizard. Melee and ranged, resistance of one, does two damage. Three to summon. Hmm. So it's got damage resistance and one hit point more than the bone wolf. Same outgoing damage, but the Bone Wolf allows the combo strikes bonus. Well, we're going to stick with Bone Wolf. Cover shot. I like cover shot. Range attack three, and if you're adjacent to an obstacle, you get defend four. It's a good combo. Hit and run. Melee attack two. Draw movement card. Now, nah, we're going to go with cover shot against... I'm going to replace a power shot with cover shot. Take it all, continue, and we'll sidle on over the grasslands. I'm going to smooth the surface recently with her feet to cover something up, and you realize from their even spacings that the marks from the four corners of a rectangle, something has been buried in the barren wilderness. Start to dig. Weakness. I failed every one of these so far. <laughs> did, did we get weakness? So, we got some money. I think we actually did not get the weakness that time. No, nah, we're not going to there. Undulating plains have become craggier with several low ridges ahead. Sending the final ridge, you see a series of fiery fissures and craters spewing volcanic fire and sending burning black rocks into the air. Uh, see if Malkin can use her elemental powers to cool the rock. Sounds good. Bring down into one of the fissures, Rastin spots some skeletal remains on a shelf near the lava. Blow, Malkin focuses her thoughts and draws the energy from a nearby fissure so that Rastin can approach safely. So we got uh, healthy wood, rare crafting, some sturdy bone, which is a common crafting, and scale armor. For either the warrior or the elementalist. Repel, first time you attack each turn, defend equal to the highest attack. Whoa, what? Wait a minute. First time you attack, defend equal to highest attack on a single target. That'd be crazy good on the warrior. Whip out one of those eight point damaging, have eight defense after a charge into the middle of a bunch of people. You can pull the combos off. And Grit, defend two, draw a card for each different named effect on this character, then remove all negative named effects. Yeah, I like that armor. That's good stuff. Hey, you. Let's uh, swap out your heavy breastplate. We're going to go from arm. Oh, it's even better defense because it's rarer. More rare. <laughs> Blue is better. All right, Grit and Repel. Fun. Uh, the Elementalist could use a Heavy Breastplate. Seems a little weird the Elementalist could put that on. What would we be losing? The Prepare Power. 
It's actually a pretty good, pretty good card. Zero cost to gain a willpower to start of your turn. Basically, lets you power up your your magic or your mana. But I don't get it off that often for whatever reason. I think I'd rather have the armor three, just in case she gets in trouble. Let's go with that. All right, uh, we're tired. This is not a good place to stop. Ooh, spooky question marks in the middle of a spooky woods. We're going to avoid the spooky question marks. Okay, just about make it just about make out a young female hybrid with her arms and head chained to the remains of a sturdy building. She's surrounded by a mob of ratlings who are throwing clumps of something foul smelling at her. Try to help the prisoner by running back into the square, warning the villagers of an impending attack by a dragon. 50% chance of a new follower, and then go shop. Attempt to sneakily steal some obsidian, or ignore the scene and see if you can find a trader. <laughs> so we can guarantee going to the shop, possibly gain a follower, and possibly shop, and possibly gain some cash. We'll do the possible gain follower. Alright, uh, the crowd has begun to disperse and the lifeless body of the hybrid hangs limply. Yeah, that didn't go so good. Alright, so we didn't get a follower. Go ahead and sell that. Buy food again. What else do we got? A blue sword, the long sword with faint and chop. Makeshift crossbow, ricochet shot. I remember that being somewhat fun. Ah, the demon skull. Really? The hunter can use the demon skull too? Demonic pact. All attacks deal plus one damage and gain two willpower at the start of every turn. Take two magic damage at the start of your turn. Ah, <laughs> I see. Power with a bite. Eldritch grasp. Magic attack four. Push the target in a random direction. Any damage bonus counts double. Hmm. I'm going to say no to that one. I'm going to say no to everything else. All right, let's, uh, we might actually stay here two days. Get our, get our bar. Oh, we actually have items we can hone our upgrade now. Let's take a look at what it says. So it's saying my black grimoire can be upgraded, huh? So it goes Curse Plus, Necrotic Spear Plus. Magic Attack 3 and Inflict defense t Defenseless 2 on all targets. Magic Attack 3. And it's requiring these materials, I'm assuming? I, I'm going to go for it. I'm liking Necrotic Spear is awesome. Moving it from 2 damage to 3 damage is, is great. I mean, it's... It hit anywhere, <laughs> so it's a perfect finisher for those guys you get down low or to get them within range of somebody else finishing. No line of sight needed. That's like super powerful. So yeah, hell yeah, let's let's do that. Plus one black grimoire. All right, now we're out of materials. We can still hone an item. They're saying I can hone my jeweled dagger, huh? Which does what? To remove oh okay honing removes cards so if I didn't want a particular card that uh, will help thin the deck out uh 